Hey, so uh, here's my story example. So listen to this story and then think about what was my purpose, who is my audience, and what kind of tone did I use? Was that tone appropriate? So um, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Johnny, and Johnny thought he was the bravest toughest, most courageous boy that ever lived. And everybody in the neighborhood knew it. If you dared him to do anything, he'd do it, no questions asked. Well, one day, another little boy named Timmy came into town. Now, Timmy also thought that he was rough and tough and super brave. One day Johnny and Timmy met, and Timmy looked at Johnny, and he said, Hey, I hear you think you're the bravest boy in this neighborhood. I dare you to prove it. Johnny's eyes got really big, and he gulped, and he swallowed, and he said, uh, uh, Okay, uh, what do you want me to do? And Timmy said, I heard that the house at the end of the street is haunted. I dare you to spend the night in that house. If you do, I'll admit that you're the bravest kid in this entire neighborhood. Johnny's eyes got huge and he gulped again and his knees were shaking and his voice was shaking and he said, uh, 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 okay, fine, I'll do it. So that night, he got his flashlight and his sleeping bag, and he told his mom that he was spending the night at John's house. And he walked down the street and came to the big, spooky old house. It was so old, and nobody had lived there for so long, that they had put boards up in front of all the windows and doors. He grabbed one of the boards at the front door, and he pulled with all his might, and to his surprise, it came right off. So he pulled another couple of boards, and pretty soon, the door was wide open. He opened the door and walked inside, and everything was covered in dirt and dust. It looked like nobody had lived there for years. Hello? He shouted into the house, his voice shaky, but nothing responded. So he walked into the living room and he saw a bunch of old furniture and a big empty space in the middle of the floor. He unrolled his sleeping bag and crawled in for the night. Th this isn't so bad, he said to himself. Maybe I can do this. And he fell asleep. A little while into his rest, he heard a scratching sound coming from outside. He looked out the window, expecting to see a big scary monster, but instead all he saw was some tree branches scraping against the window. He laughed at himself and said, it's just a tree, who cares? And he fell back asleep. A little while later, he heard that same scratching sound, this time coming from the roof. And he peered up to the ceiling, his eyes were really wide, and he listened for a few minutes, but then he thought to himself, well, maybe, uh, maybe it's just a raccoon or something. Yeah, that's all it was, and he fell back asleep. A little while later, that same sound was coming down the chimney, and he peered up over the sleeping bag, and he stared at the fireplace trembling and shaking with all his might. And as he watched, a large, clawed, scaled hand reached down out of the fireplace and pulled with it a large, scaled, muscular arm. Johnny didn't wait to see what was attached to that arm. He jumped out of his sleeping bag, grabbed his flashlight, and ran out the front door. And he ran down the street as fast as his little legs could carry him. 
He could hear the monster chasing him down the street. No matter how fast he ran, it seemed like the monster was even faster. Well, pretty soon, he was almost out of energy, and he fell to the ground, exhausted. He could feel the monster's breath on the back of his neck, and he knew he was done for. The monster reached down, grabbed him by the shoulder, and spun him around so that he was face to face with the monster. He was now staring into the meanest, grossest, most disgusting face he'd ever seen. The monster peered down close so that he, they were, were almost touching face to face. The monster looked at him, studied him for a minute, and said, Oh my gosh, are you okay? The end. So, a couple of things to think about with this story. First of all, who was my target audience? How do you know that? What was my purpose? How do you know that? And based on those two questions, what do you think about my tone? Was my tone appropriate? So let's talk about that real quick. So first of all, what do you think my purpose was? Well, it seemed like I was telling a scary story, right? I mean, it had all the elements of a scary story. There was a monster. It was in the middle of the night. Um, scary things were happening. What about my audience? Well, you can tell that my audience must have been kids because, well, first I started with once upon a time, right? And uh, my vocabulary was small, short words, uh, simple sentences, um, not a lot of violence. In fact, no violence, nothing too disturbing, nothing too disgusting. It would probably scare some kids, but it wouldn't terrify them. I'm not going to cause traumatic uh, psychological damage to anyone that listens to that story. Would that scare a kid? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. That's for you to decide. So expand upon the things that I just talked about in the discussion board. Think about the vocabulary. Think about the content. Think about how kids would respond to that. What do you think kids are afraid of? Put your responses in the discussion board.